with FPV drones, there's always gonna be a little bit of a delay from when something is happening RL to you being able to react to it. And reducing this delay as much as possible is basically the easiest way to instantly become a better pilot. So for a typical FPV drone, it looks something like this. Got about 30 milliseconds from your digital FPV system like DJI or Voxnel. Then you got about 20 milliseconds from your crossfire if you're using crossfire on 50 hertz or dynamic mode. And then you got about another 20 milliseconds from your beta flight if you're flying on default settings. And this is about as far as you can push it if you really optimize it. So for example, if you switch to analog or DJI 04 with the race mode, you can cut down the video system to about 20 milliseconds. If you are using Express LRS with 250 hertz or higher, you can cut that down to about 5 milliseconds. And if you tune your pit controller well, you can also get that down to about 5 to 7 milliseconds for a total of 30 milliseconds. And if you ever played an online competitive game before, you know that going from 70 ping to 30 ping is a huge advantage and it's really no different in FPV as well. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to reduce your pit controller latency from this 20 milliseconds default to about 5 to 7 milliseconds with very little effort. And if you follow the steps one by one, it should take you no more than an hour to get to this point. Okay, let's start. Take your drone, remove all the propellers, go to escconfigurator.com, plug in the USB cable, plug in a battery, this open port selection should be uh, your beta flight showing up here, select it, connect, and try to press this read settings button. If it's successful, make sure it says BlueJ 24 kilohertz. If it says anything else, go to flash all ECs, select BlueJ, select version uh, this 21, and make sure to select 24 kilohertz because anything else just flies like shit. I don't really know why, but it just does. So 24 kilohertz, and then flash. If you have any other type of ESCs, like a BLE 32 or an AM32, then this will just fail. And you can move on to the next step. Now disconnect the LiPo. And open beta flight. And you're gonna go to this presets tab. Look for your radio link. For me, it's Express LS 250 Hz. Make sure to always use the racing preset, because anything else will add a lot of latency, which you don't want, especially these HD or cinematic ones. So just pick preset, uh, racing preset. Then you're gonna search for default and also select this default tune and filters. Hit save and reboot. Then you're gonna go to the motors tab and enable bidirectional D shot. Click yes on the warning. Save and reboot. Then you're gonna go to pit tuning. Find this dynamic idle and enter 22. This will just help with uh, long dives and hang time in general. The find the dynamic damping DMAX, put that on zero to disable it. Hit save. On rates, you can just put in your normal rates, but they should be still there if you have applied them before. The filters should look like this, all on defaults. Then you're gonna go to black box, select the onboard flash, and this only works if you have a flight controller with a black box lock storage, but most flight controllers should have it. Then for the uh, logging rate, select the closest one to two kilohertz. Sometimes it's 1.6 or just two. Save and reboot. If you already have something on your black box, you can erase the flash. 
And now you're ready to charge some batteries and record the filter flight. But before you can do the filter flight, you need to make sure your drone is prepared from the hardware side as well. So tighten all your screws properly, put on some new props, put in your action camera or a dummy weight, then put on your battery and plug it in. And then as the last step, you need to make sure your CG or your center of gravity is correct. The easiest way to do that is to take a prop tool and place it in the middle of the bottom plate and try to balance the drone on top of it. On the error it's super easy because there's a screw right in the middle. If your CG is correct, the drone should be able to balance by itself. But if it falls to the front or the back, you need to move your battery accordingly until it balances properly. So now for the filter flight, just take off and then slowly raise the throttle from whatever you're hovering at to 100% over 3 seconds or so. And you can do it 2 or 3 times just to make sure you didn't fuck it up. But one time should be enough as well. Then when you're back, connect the drone to Betaflight again. Go to the black box tab, activate mass storage and open the file in the black box explorer. You can either go to blackbox.betaflight.com or you can also download the local version instead. You see this, this blue stuff down here, that's your throttle position. Gonna press I where you want the lock to start. And then go to where you're done doing doing your testing. I think here's probably fine. Press O. This will only highlight this part of the log. Make sure there's no prop wash uh, making noise in the log. Then you're gonna go to graph setup. And just click remove on all these. And then you're gonna click add graph. Hit unfiltered gyros, apply, and then click on one of these axes. Gonna start with roll. It's gonna show up this little window here. Click maximize. Then you're gonna go up here and select frequency versus throttle. It will show up this graph. And on the right side here, you can Make it a bit brighter so you can actually see what's going on. And you're gonna start to see some distinct shapes on here. Most prominent are these big uh, curvy curvy things here. This one and this one. But there's also this vertical line here. This vertical line is gonna be your notch filter. And the, the curvy ones are gonna be the RPM filter. And we're gonna start with the notch filter. To do that, hold shift on your keyboard. It's gonna add this uh, marker, which shows the hertz values. And you're gonna move it just right before this, this vertical thing starts. So that's like 178. Let's just do 175 hertz. And then we're gonna switch to the pitch over here. Check if it's what's there. Also see the same vertical line here, but it's a bit higher. So we're just gonna take the lower of the two values, which is 175. And then open beta flight to the filters tab. Find this dynamic notch filter. In my case, I only have one one of these vertical things. If you have two, you can increase this to two, but usually it's one. And then this minimum frequency, I'm going to enter the 175. And then we can just save. Then we're going to do the RPM filter next. So go back to roll and see where with shift again, see where this is, this curvy thing is starting. So I'd say about 120. Maybe we could get away with also 170, but let's play it safe with 120. 
and check pitch as well. Oh, yeah, there's some on the pitch. So we're definitely going to do 120. So 120 is the lowest. So gyro up aim filter, 120. Now there's one here, and then there's two. And we could technically also go down to two here, but honestly, just leave it on three. Then we're gonna go to this gyro low pass one, and just turn it off. This gyro low pass two, you can turn off if you want, but I found that it helps with keeping your motors from burning up if you have really fucked up props. So you can just, like even if you can just put that to 1.5, you can probably put it to two as well. I like to keep it on 1.5. Then this yaw low pass, you can turn off, you can leave it on. I don't think it does anything really. I usually just turn it off. And this D low pass, you can also leave for now. You can maybe look at it later. But this should already do a lot. Now you're gonna save this and go for a little test flight. Make sure it doesn't sound weird or the motors get hot, super hot or anything like that. Just fly like 30 seconds should be plenty. And if it's all good, then you're gonna start with the pitch tuning. Really only gonna do one thing, which is bump up the master multiplayer until it explodes. You can do it in 0.2 steps. So it starts out with one, just go to 1.2, do a little test hover, if it sounds good. Go to 1.4, test hover again, if it sounds good. 1.6, test hover. 1.6 starts to be a bit in the danger zone. Go up in 0.1 ticks from now. Because if you go way too far, you can get a flyaway or burn up your motors. And generally for 5-inch freestyle setups, it's going to be around this this D range of 50, roughly. So in my case, I got all the, all the way up to 2 before it sounded, started sounding weird. And then once you reach that point, you want to go back 0.2 clicks. And then go for a proper test flight. Fly 30 seconds to a minute. Give it some gas as well. And then check on your motors if they're hot, go down point, uh, point 0.1 more. If it's fine, leave it there. And then what you want to do is put on some fucked up props. I would go with about the, the most fucked up props you would still want to fly. And then do a little test flight with them. If it sounds super weird or tries to fly away, you want to go back until, you, until it becomes flyable. Which is usually point 0.1 or point 0.2 clicks back. And then this is going to be your final master multiplayer tune. Usually for normal freestyle setups, your D gain is going to be somewhere in the 45 to 55 range. If you have a super light setup with powerful motors, you might be a bit lower, maybe in the low 40s or below 40 even. Or if you have a super underpowered setup with a big GoPro, you might end up a bit higher, like the higher high 50s or low 60s. If you notice your quad is having a little bounce back issues or overshoot, you can increase this damping slider a bit. Oftentimes freestyle setups like to be on 1.1. So just go up a bit. But if you do, you see the D term goes up. So make sure to also go down a bit with the master multiplayer again. That you're back in this range where you were before. Now you can go for a proper test flight, fly like a full pack or two. See if the motors get hot, see if it causes any issues with broken props. Maybe you want to go down one more click if it causes hot motors. But usually you should be okay. And if you want to push it a little bit more, you can also go to this D-term filter multiplayer and just increase it a little bit, see what happens. Maybe go 1.1, 1.2, something like that. I'm just going to put it in 1.2. 